Hi viewers, welcome to my channel and welcome back to the series of cloud formation from beginners to advanced. In today's tutorial, we are going to see how to deploy private subnet and understand its dependent resources as part of this tutorial. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So let's get started. So before we move on, we need to understand what all are the prerequisite for this tutorial. So the first prerequisite is you need to add a cloud formation extension as a part of Visual Studio Code. Uh, we are going to perform this uh, tutorial in Visual Studio Code and this cloud formation extension is help to automate our code while we are writing by providing us uh, many options as part of this cloud formation template. Now, the second dependency would be uh, you need to deploy a VPC. So if you have not deployed it, make sure to uh, check my video in which I have explained how we can deploy a VPC. Make sure that before uh, going ahead and implementing private subnet, make sure that you have deployed the VPC. Let's go ahead and understand what has been already implemented as part of VPC and what we are going to implement. So this is a diagram where we can see that we have already deployed a VPC. Once this VPC is deployed, this is a private VPC and on creation of this private VPC, automatically a main dot table gets created and associated. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to go ahead and we are going to create a private subnet. As part of this tutorial, we will create a private subnet, a resource and uh, along with private route table and we are going to add a private route uh, into this private subnet. So before going ahead with the coding of the template, let's understand what all components we are going to use as part of this template. So we are going to create a one parameter that would be custom VPC. What is this parameter? This is the uh, VPC which we have already deployed as part of our previous video. Now let's go to the resources. In resources, we are going to create a private subnet, private route table, and we are going to associate the private subnet to the private route table. And as a part of output, uh, we are going to uh, print the private subnet, private route table, and private route table association IDs. So let's go ahead and jump to our Visual Studio code. So let's go ahead and create a YAML file. So the file is printed successfully. Now let's make the use of the extension okay so in this as i said we are only going to use uh, only the parameters resources and output so let's remove this which are not required now as a best practice we should always make sure that we provide a good description by looking at which we can understand what exactly this template has been made for so let's go ahead and add a description over here so after adding description, let's jump to parameters. So make sure that you give double space over here. And I will write VPC. So over here I will select parameter type VPC ID. So it will give me the parameter type. Let's give the name to this parameter as custom VPC. Let's give a description to the specific parameter to help us understand what exactly this parameter is for. Now let's go to the AWS console. Okay, so in the AWS console, we will go in cloud formation. Okay. So guys, as you can see over here, that our VPC is already launched. I will just open that VPC and I will go to outputs and from here I will get the VPC ID which we are going to provide as default in our code over here. Make sure this value is in double quotes. Okay. Now our parameter is ready. As per our component list, we have completed the VPC ID. Now let's move and go ahead and create private subnet. So it's time with double space and I will give subnet. So this has given all the subnet options over here. Let us mention the name of the subnet. This would be private subnet. Now, 
guys as i said over here we are going to use uh, two intrinsic functions and this intrinsic function is going to help us launch uh, pick our availability zone that would be part of this code so let me show you what is this intrinsic function is so if i go over here this is select and if i write cloud formation intrinsic functions so in this you will see these are the intrinsic function right now we are using select if i open this it will give you the view what exactly we are using it for so the intrinsic function select returns a single object from a list of objects by the index so as you can see so this is select and select is going to pick one or many values from this specific list so this is the code over here so right now we have used function select now let's see what's there inside so over here i have given an index of 0 to pick the one of the value over here and i have used get availability zones so it will pick one of the availability zones which are been available as a part of this list so if i go over here you can see this get availability zone function it returns an array that lists availability zone for a specific region in alphabetical order so suppose if there are uh, six availability zone so for example in us east one there are six availability zone it will give all the six availability zone as part of that list and from that uh, the index zero would be picked and as you can see if uh, so as a part of third uh, double quotes over uh, single quotes over here there is no value mentioned because i have i'm going to use a default a uh, region for my specific account but if you want to add multiple accounts over here uh, sorry not accounts regions over here just go ahead and see this documentation over here they have mentioned that it also have support for multiple regions you can use it in this way okay so now over here we have to give the vpc id so over here again we are going to use an intrinsic function that is a refer and we are going to just call this custom vpc over here now for cidr block what you can do is first let's go to the cloud formation over here let's go to template and if you can see this is the cidr block for the vpc now based on that we can segregate our subnets cidr so over here i will write cidr david c this is a very cool tool that can help you to segregate your subnets so over here i will just mention the vpc cidr and i click on update so as you can see it gave me uh, the list of post available now uh, suppose if uh, in your account you want multiple uh, subnets so for that you, you can use multiple cidr so for our scenario i will divide this by two so if you see over here now there will be two cidrs available within this uh, vpc cider if you want more you can click on divide if you want more you can click on divide once again so now it would be 62 per host cidr now let's reset it and as per as per our requirement i will just copy the cidr over here and i will paste that in the cidr block let's give this name as private submit So that will create our private subnet. Now let's go back over here, double space. Now our next resource should be private route table. So let's jump to the console and over here, route table. So over here we will give a name, private route table. So over here, we just have to mention the VPC ID. And as you know, we have the VPC ID over here. You can see we have referred it over here already. So we will refer it over here also. So that gives us all the properties based on the private route table. So in regards to properties, whenever you are not sure what properties are mandatory and what are not, just make sure to copy the resource name over here enter search for that resource and over here see the properties and the tags would be mentioned so if i uh, click on required yes and just perform search so guys you can see 
this specific VPC ID is mandatory to launch this resource. If you don't mention this VPC ID, this resource will not launch and you will get an error. Now, let's move ahead. Double space. Now we have to create a route table association. So I will write route. So as soon as you write route, it will give you a route table association option over here. So this is submit association. So over here, I will just mention the name private route table association. And along with that, over here, we have to mention the subnet ID. So we will use our interesting function reference and we will use our private subnet name over here. And for route table ID, we will refer our private route table over here. So that's it for the instances, guys. Now let's go ahead and move to the outputs that would be required as part of this code. So over here, we are going to create three outputs. <coughs> The first output is the private subnet. As you can see, this is the private subnet. I have used the same private subnet over here. So over here, uh, let me give you one example before we go ahead. So over here also, just click on double space <coughs> and just click on output. As soon as give you, you click on output, it will give you option of uh, this framework over here where you can put in your value and based on your requirement, you can add the descriptions and values. So right now I am just uh, putting it directly from my end uh, to save some time for the video so that the video is not too long. So I will just make sure that I have correct names as mentioned over here. So guys, our uh, template is ready. Let's save this template now. So as you can see, we, we created a custom VPC parameter. We created three resources, private subnet, private route table, private subnet route table association, and we created three outputs. I left output VPC, it is not required for now. So let's move to the next step. So now what we're going to do is we are going to launch our template, but before launching our template, I'm just going to check whether our template is valid or not. So let's go ahead and launch our template. Let's open Git. Over here, we will type the validate command. So I already have this command handy. So over here, I will just mention the file that I have created. So for file name, I will jump back to my console. It is private subnet underscore associate dot yaml. <coughs> private subnet underscore associate dot yaml. So let's go ahead and click on enter. So guys, there is no error. The validation is successful. Let's go ahead and create the stack. Now, the command to create the stack is AWS cloud formation create stack. You have to mention your stack name over here in this name and over here you have to mention the file path. So let's go ahead and run the create stack command over here instead of public subnet. I just mention private subnet and for template body let's copy this name. Copy. Let's paste this over here. Guys, as you can see, the stack ID is successfully created and it has provided us the stack ID number based on which we can segregate our stack which we have launched. So, if you want to see what stack has been launched, uh, once the, let's jump to our AWS console over here. Let's see. And guys, as you can see, this stacks it is in creating progress. Let's wait for the stack creation to be completed. Meanwhile, we can check the events. And if you can see the event, okay, it has created a private subnet, private route table, and it has created the association also. And as you can see, the private subnet is created successfully. So guys, as the launch template is successful, let's go ahead with the verification of stack that we have created. So for verifying our stack, we have to jump back to our cloud formation console. So over here in private subnet, if I go in outputs, you can see it has given the output private route table ID, private subnet association table ID and private subnet. Now to see whether our private subnet is created successfully, what we can do is we can go to AWS <coughs> and over here we can search for VPC. So this information you will get in VPC dashboard. So let's click on VPC and in VPC, 
and you can click on subnets and under subnets guys you can see the name of the private subnet is private subnet and our subnet is created now <coughs> i will click on the subnet id so guys if i go down you can see there is a route table which is being shown over here so let's see whether this route table is associated or not i will click on this route table so as you can see so the subnet is created let's go from the menu so it would be easy for you to understand if i click on route tables you can see one private route table has been created successfully if i open that private route table over here you can see that we have the table in place and if i click on submit association you can see that it has been successfully associated with the private subnet that we have created as part of our template so if i go back to our template over here our resources all three resources got created so first the private subnet got created then private route table then our third resource it associated this private route table to the private subnet let's move ahead now as we have verified the stack the, the last and the most important step is make sure to perform the resource cleanup by deleting the stack so guys once you have tested your stack if it is working successful you have to make sure that you delete your stack by any chance if you are using your free account where you are testing this and you forgot each and every resource consumption is going to cost you so if you want to delete your stack what can you do just go over here in aws i will go to the cloud formation console once again and in cloud formation console you don't have to do much you just have to click on it and you just have to click on delete so as soon as you click on delete it will delete the stack that you have created so if i refresh it so the delete is still in progress once it is deleted successfully and if you refresh it will go away from here so that's it from this tutorial guys i hope this tutorial helped you so in case of any concerns you can go ahead and put your queries in comments and i will try my level best to answer your queries based on my availability i hope you like the video stay tuned for the next video have a great day ahead goodbye